Nantwich, a wealthy Cheshire town in the heart of a thriving farming community. Just off the high street is Oscars, named after Irish writer Oscar Wilde. It's been hard work. I've put a lot of money into it and I want it to work out now. I'm running out of excuses. Kathy, are you sorting out the bar coming? Thank you very much. Twelve months ago, with the support of her family, Maura put £65,000, her life savings, into opening her dream restaurant. I like, I like meeting people. I, I love meeting people and it, this is what I enjoy. One big happy family running a quaint Irish restaurant. Perfect. <laughs> Trouble is, Maura's now losing two grand a week and this place was meant to be her pension plan. It's just a nightmare. It really is, it is a nightmare. It's, it's a panic, and especially when I'm on my own. You know, I have nobody to go home and say, oh, God, you know, what do you think? Maura can't afford a head chef. So her son Lennon's heading up the kitchen for free. I'm the one that's closest to me mum. So obviously I wouldn't see her in the lurch. And that's it, I've just stayed. But even with Lennon's charitable contribution, it seems Oscar's is on its last legs. Fuck me, on top of a butcher. Are you well? I am very well. It's Mora. Mora. Good. Bigara, bigara. This is uh, cosy, nice. And um, who's that on the wall down there? Who do you think it is? It looks like a fat version of Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Lenny. How are you doing? Pleased to meet you. And you. What's under here? They're the ribs, okay. which um, cook in Coca Cola. Cooked in Coca Cola? Yeah. Fuck me, that's a new one. Honest to God, they are. They're cooked in Coca Cola? In Coca Cola. Okay. Lenin used to be a pub chef and it looks like he's picked up some bad habits. And what style of food is it? I call a bit of everything. Bit of everything. Uh, fish, steaks, a bit of pasta, a bit of vegetarian. Try to cover a bit of everything. Oh dear. I can't wait to find out what more his eclectic menu has to offer. Okay. Thank you. King prawn wrap, green lip mussels, soup du jour. A little bit of everything. A good restaurant does one sort of food brilliantly. A bad one does 50 badly. Oscar Wilde Buffalo. Buffalo in Cheshire. Even I'd find more as menu a challenge. Gordon's having a paella of small God paella. knows how her son Lennon copes. He wants a carbonara for his mains. Oh, the bastard. You said? What? He had to pick the thing and worse that. Oh, thank you. My paella starter uh, takes 20 minutes to arrive. So, a nice um, psychedelic pink crab stick. It stinks as well. Then... Like everyone else, I start waiting. And waiting for my main course. Oh, for fuck's sake. What are they doing in there? Lots of cutlery on the table, but no fucking food. Has anyone told them there are 38 customers in the restaurant? Table three and seven. I've been cleared for about 20 minutes. Fucking has not been told. Fucking has not With food and service this bad, first time customers will never come back. <laughs> Somebody's having a laugh at you. Table one has complained about waiting so long for the food, now they want a bottle of complimentary wine. What can you do? You have to keep the customer happy. Moore has been forced to flush what little profit she could be making straight down the toilet. Somebody! Thank you very much. At last, an hour and a half after ordering it, my carbonara finally arrives. It tastes like there's vinegar there. You don't put fucking vinegar in a carbonara. There's egg in there, there's no parmesan in there. It's bland, it's garlicky. Chicken's rubbery. Apart from being crap and really shit, I actually feel really embarrassed because the girls behind me haven't even eaten yet. We've been in here since 8 o'clock and it's now 10 past 10, so we kind of gone a bit past caring as what comes. Fucking hell. I'm amazed they've held out this long. What's going on in there? Uh, Lennon is really fucking embarrassing me out there. Let me, uh, let me give you a hand. So, um, who's, communi who's communicating? Who's, who's doing what? No. Anyone in? What's that loon down there? Who put that under there? Obviously. The smouldering 35 degree heat in this kitchen oh, that's, that's has started to scramble their brains. The Who put it under the grill, guys? I put it on there. And did you look after it, Les? 
Well, I just assumed he saw me put it under. Because he was stood right next to me when I did it. So. This is like a fucking Lauren Hardy show. Huh? This is another fine mess I've got myself into. Solid four. Solid four, three. Solid. Veg, solid three, yeah. It's a farce. Veg is overcooked. Is that overcooked? With mother and son playing the blame game. Where is it? What? There's no where it's going, the fuck off. This is the problem we have most of the time. Fucking waitresses. No one is taking control. Table two is now looking for some discount. I'd say get fucked. No, you, don't, you can't do that. No, you you can't. don't speak to customers like that. Two bottles of wine. Two of us, that's like nearly 30 quid. Yeah, but quid. The, you can't speak to a customer like that. Well, I fucking disagree. Well, I, I'll sort it out. But I'm just saying, the fella here. This kitchen's a pressure cooker, waiting to explode. Rare. Anyway, let's not argue. Let's just try and get some food out. Lenin. Fuck off. Fuck right. Fuck and cook itself. A head chef who can't stand the heat. Fuck. What happened to the quaint family-run restaurant? Fuck me. It's not normal, this. You know, this is not fucking normal. Huh? Doing your mum a favour is one thing. Helping to run her business into the ground is another. You can't be happy with this. It does hurt to see it, because I know that every penny my mum's got is in the, her house, is in this, everything's in this. It's shit. I apologise so much. Moore has given away over £100 worth of free drink and food. She'd have been better off closing for the night and saving the restaurant's reputation. Uh, Lenin, stand next to your mum. I actually sat down with a little bit of excitement, you know that? Thinking, Christ, this is quaint, this is beautiful. Then when the food arrived, trust me, I don't think, quite honestly, we need to hear any more bad comments on the food tonight, because I've had a fucking belly full. We're in the shit. Great mom, way so long. Morning. 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 It's my second day at Oscars. Last night, mother and son team Maura and Lennon ran possibly the worst service I've ever seen. The first thing that struck me when I came into the kitchen last night was the disrespect between mother and son. That was a big shock for me. Yes. Um, with it being a family business, you know, this is like a livelihood. And I walked out and I, I do know that, you know, that wasn't right. What the fuck happened last night? Um, you give it to me, truthfully. Truthfully. Um, and seriously. And seriously, I um, I was nervous about the whole thing, and I did, and I'll openly admit it, have a few drinks yesterday, uh -huh. waking up to it, and basically through that, I did lose my concentration at what I was doing. Everything just went pear-shaped. If I am going to get involved and start working fucking hard to help get this thing back on track, you've really got to promise me that you're going to concentrate not disappear and forget uh, anything about a fucking drink. 100%. 110%. I promise you that. I'm really worried about Lennon turning to alcohol every time there's pressure in the kitchen. So many chefs go down that line. And if it's not alcohol, it's drugs. And that's the last thing you need when you're under pressure. It's a fucking recipe for disaster. Like his dad before him, Lennon's always wanted to be a chef. But so far, I've seen nothing revolutionary in his cooking. It's time to find out just what lights his fire. I don't cook for myself. You don't fucking eat your no. own food. Are you keen on anything? Curry. I just like vindaloo curry for some reason. Vindaloo? I'm, yeah. No, I'm red. No, I said, I'm sit, I'll sit with a bottle of wine with that. Now I'm happy enough. So you eat vindaloos, you smoke 40 cigarettes a day, a bottle of wine. Sugar sandwiches. Sugar what? Sugar sandwiches. How the fuck do you... the bread and dip it into the sugar bowl. Gorgeous. Trust me. You must have a pellet like a cow's bat side having fucking <laughs> diarrhoea, you know that? Sugar sandwiches and ribs braised yeah, in Coca-Cola. Lenin's taste buds have clearly lost lamb. their Irish roots. Lamb. I need to inspire them with some good old-fashioned ingredients. Lamb. Now that can be turned into three, four hundred quid's worth of turnover. How can you turn that into something delicious? Yeah, and sell it on the fucking menu. I think it's something for chicken as well, you know that. Let's see what his vivid imagination can muster. Not out of a cookbook. They're off the top of my head. Okay. 
Ready? Yep. Right, the chicken, yep. marinated in honey and whole grain mustard, mm -hmm. served on a bed of wilted spinach. Go on. I like that. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, I do like that. You had a drink last night? Last night, yes. Yeah, I didn't so, drink a thing last night. It tastes like shit. Yeah, it tastes like shit. Next. Diced lamb, cooked in a tomato and basil sauce, and just topped with palms and cheese. Put a bit of chilli, just give it a little bit of a bite. This, this is why I think you destroy the majority of the stuff you do, because you put all these little bits of shit at the end that just blows it. Uh, I, I don't think that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Almost reminds me of a stew, like, a, like an Irish you know, stew. And if I came to Oscars, I'd, I'd love to see a real nice Irish stew. If I knew the chef was Irish, bang. You'd expect. I'd be over the fucking oh. moon. That one's workable, but not bad. OK, thank you. But you can definitely do better. Yeah. And there's no time like the present. Irish family. When we put the cabbage in, I think we can do it quite sort of rustic, no? OK? Irish restaurant, Irish stew, out. here we come. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> so we dry them out a little bit. Create a little bit of fur around the outside, almost like a little bit, bit like a fur jacket. That's like. what they yeah. do yeah. in Ireland. When? When, when, in Ireland, when they boil the spuds and drain Welcome. them. Welcome back. They go back on until they just yeah. start to fluff out. Why the fuck are you telling me this? Yeah? Right in your own restaurant, when you produce the shit you produce and now you've just opened up and hit the nail on the head. You've fallen out of love with food, haven't you? And a lot of people have said that, yes. I don't know why. I have no reason why. You've got to get it back. So, what does Mum think? I'm ashamed to say I'm Irish and I couldn't make Irish stew like this. It's lovely. Yeah, you're Irish, for fuck's yeah. sake. You should be, you know, renowned in this town for your Irish stew. Walking around like proud cock. I mean, it, it, yeah, and it's it's simple, it's basic, it's cheap. Yeah, okay. Mother and son are starting to see eye to eye. Now it's time to get mature trainee chef Les up to speed. And did you not want to be a chef early on in life, or did... no? It never really, it never really occurred to me. I mean, when I left school, it was just take what job I could get at the time, really, money-wise. Yeah. yeah. Les has had 21 jobs in 21 years. Started cooking at 18. Everything from gas man to bingo caller. Give me a call. The eyes down, here we go. So it's uh, on the blue, four and two, blue, 42. <laughs> two fat ladies, 88. All the sevens, a pair of crutches, 77. If he can cook as well as he can call, then job 22 could be the winning number. Six and two, clickety duck, 62. Uh, red all the ones, legs 11. Legs. <laughs> Where's the whistles? Oh, they whistle them. Of course, yeah. Thank you, whistle. Okay, you great. Know. The chefs may be on side, but if Oscars is empty midweek, it doesn't matter how much we improve the food. How much do you need to take a week to break even? To break even, about three and a half. Thousand? Mm. And what are you taking? On average, at a minute, it's two. Two thousand? Mm. Relationships are frail, and businesses down the pan. But how long can you continue surviving like this? Oh, uh, I'm at, uh, at the end now. I just I can't carry on like this much longer. It's a nightmare. I'm, I am getting worried. Uh -huh. My dream is just going down the chute. Where's the butcher? Craig. Moore's oh, never run a restaurant before. You've got, you've got two minutes. And upstairs two establishments minutes, yeah. are the hardest to fill. So she's got to get her business head on. Your windows. Yeah. They're fucking amazing. I've never seen such phenomenal space in all my life. You know that? She's been ignoring a tailor-made marketing solution that's right on her doorstep. Walking down here, Craig, he's totally oblivious that there's any restaurant. Hey, Chinese next door, fine, but bloody hell. I want to know what's going up in there. Does any customers ever tell you that no, they don't know where the restaurant is? Yeah, didn't know you were here. I think you know what's coming. What I want to do is pull those beautiful big blinds down and just stick Oscars. Classic Irish cooking, upstairs. Telephone number. And what I'd like to do is try to come to some arrangement where you can bring your family for a little bite to eat. Maura will host the table, and we can have that bit of sort of working relationship together. Oh, That'd be nice. brilliant for us, yeah, isn't it? brilliant for both of us, yeah. Huh? I'm just trying to think of ways that we can have as a bit of a marketing tour without having to spend shed loads of money. Thank you. Butcher's handshake. Solid as a rock. Building a reciprocal relationship with the butcher is key to Oscar's success. Currently, we're using upstairs your fillet steak, the ribeye. Ribeye, the chicken. Yeah. chicken the chicken. And the ribs. And the ribs. And is it um, local lamb? Local lamb. All local produced, yes. Thank you. By making full use of his local suppliers, Lenin and his customers will be getting a better deal. Fresh food on the day. Hello. New menu. It's going to be a new menu on there. 
So... And with Craig's name all over it? Yes. I'll say, we'll put your name on our menu. This is where we get our meat. So we need a good discount. <laughs> How am not you laughing at? I'm serious. He's getting the hang of this. So I'm going to push him even further. I want Lenin to buy lunch for 15 surprise guests. 30 quid. On 30 quid. On 30 quid. So what's two pound a head? A fiver for the lot. <laughs> Go on. Wait. Cheers. If he can stick to a budget, he'll make more profit for the restaurant. How much are the potatoes? A pound. I'll give you 60 pence one. Because then you can, you're not taking the mud off them. He's definitely got the gift of the gap. Are you good at this? Yeah. <laughs> but can he transfer some of that energy into the kitchen? Are you lazy? Uh, yes, I'd say that. Yes. You are. Why have you turned lazy? Um, I don't. I. I. I can't. I don't know. Partly because no one's driving you behind and telling you what to do. Yes. Uh huh. I, yeah. Maybe you've just hit the nail on the head. Your mum is a weak lady. I know that. So uh, she's not going to be there fucking caning you and, and fucking telling you off. No, I get annoyed with her. And that's when the argument starts. <laughs> they say never work with children or family. Today, they're all here. But I'm keeping Lenin in the dark. My little surprise. But let me just say, this is one table. Right now, Lenny, you can't afford to fuck up. Right. Yeah? It won't be fucked up. It better not be. Because his family are his harshest critics, especially his younger brother, Gilly. There have been a few times where I've come and I haven't been overly impressed. I'm not sure that repeating the same dish uh, constantly he, he can do at the same sort of level. I think that, that is his biggest issue. This is a chance for you to show me that you can cook and control something from scratch and yeah. create something which is not on the menu, something completely different and something a little bit inspirational. Right. Excite me. Light my fucking fire. Everything is fresh, cooked fresh, all bought locally. It's... Oh, fuck it. You can write me a fucking storyline or something, because I've no idea what, what you want me to say. What I'm trying to get out, Lenny, is some fucking passion. Some fucking care and attention and love for food. Blow me away. Deep fried local mushrooms stuffed with mature cheddar cheese. Good. Slow roasted pork. Finished with sage. Sounds nice. The dessert is fresh local strawberries served on a bed of cream. There you go. What was different on that? It's all that bullshit you're telling me that was so hard. That. That's sounding fantastic. Right. That's not so bad. But the pennies just dropped with me because that's what you are lacking in confidence. A chef without confidence is like a car without wheels. And Lenin's got to get in that driving seat. If he can woo the family with a simple roast dinner, that's half the battle. See this rock salt here? I rub it in there like that. It takes out the water, right. out of the fat. What happens to the fat? It goes nice and... It'll crisp it up. There you go. The other half of the battle is making full use of his assistant, Les. You're an important member of this team. We need you here. And you've got to feel a lot safer when this guy's connected to you. The minute this guy's not by your side, your mind's fucked, you know that. Yeah, yeah. You definitely need help. Maybe yeah, this will be a turning point for Lenin. And with his confidence boosted, we can concentrate on his cooking. Good. Good. Hey. Hello. Three and a half minutes for 15 main courses. Yeah. Fucking well yeah. done. Do me a favour and fuck off out there. Go on. Uh, it's time for Lenin <laughs> to meet his surprise guest. <laughs> so how's he fared? This is gorgeous. <laughs> this is absolutely gorgeous. What's the back there? What's the meat that's in with the, the cabbage? Bacon, onion, black well, pepper. Nice. But he does have a connection with food. Unfortunately, he just lacks the confidence. That's the real sad thing about this guy. Cooking for your family is fucking difficult because they've been criticising for a long time. I just wish he can actually do the same now for his customers because if he gets that right, we've got a chance of getting this place back on the fucking map. <laughs> It's Saturday night, and Oscars is fully booked. And what would you make a table of table? Lenny's working with Moore's expansive menu. But to give him a fighting chance, there has to be a system. So that's nice and clear. Table seven, four customers. Two Communication seats, between front of house and kitchen must be seamless. Time's on there, so we can really concentrate on getting the food out. And there's no one's arguing then, because you're saying it's 25 minutes. 
and he's saying, no, bollocks, it's only 10 minutes. So look, it's on the ticket, 7 o'clock. Now, for me, the first ticket is absolutely crucial. We'll start off the evening with the first ticket going out, flying out. Hey, there's an indication that we're going to get off to a really good start. Yeah, right, that's good. good. Yeah. Wakey, wakey. I'm putting the disasters of my first night down to Lenny having a nerve-steadying drink. No. Tonight, yeah. I'll be watching him like a hawk to see where he's going wrong. Table 11 goes to one soup, one ribeye, an extra portion of chips, 7.35. Mmm, not bad. And he's actually sounding like a proper chef. Can I go, please? Yes, please. Thank you. And that has been the best eight covers I've seen go out of this kitchen, you know that? But after 40 minutes of faultless control in the kitchen, Lenny mysteriously loses it. Big time. Bannon, this was cold and a bit tasteless. I thought we'd made good progress cooking for the family. Basically, just apologise for me. How come we're back at square one? What's that with this for? Kitchen's gone silent, it's just like being in a church. One, two, three, four, five, six tickets on board. Les is wandering, wandering around looking for stuff to do. If you don't open up and tell me what you're thinking, I can't help you. No, no, yeah? no. You've got to open up. It's pretty pants. It's really bad. I'm really sorry about your delay. Between our charm and the drink is about the only thing that's holding it up. So. I've never seen so much food come back. Something fishy is going on here. What's, uh, what's that there? Oh, What's in there? I don't know. I've got a khaki to do it for me. No, no. Tell me the truth. You said you're going to be honest this morning. Ribena water and um, a vodka in the bottom. When you started off service at 7 o'clock tonight, yeah, it was going well, you know that. It's 9 o'clock and they're starting to complain. Is that because of that? No, that's the first one that's come in the kitchen. And that is the truth. But why did you tell me you weren't going to drink? Because I'm absolutely not. I've been here all day and I just wanted one drink, so I got Catherine one. I do apologise for that. Fair enough, I'm sorry. Um, Service? Um, fuck. It's all becoming seriously clear. This is not just about Lenin's lack of confidence. You let me down fucking big time. Half past eight inside that fucking cup. You're sneaking vodka in. And I don't mind having a beer after fucking yes, service. I don't. I don't fucking care what you do after service. But in service, from 7 o'clock to 11, you fucking stay away from that. And you put your pressures on me. You give me the pressure. And it's not just the kitchen you're fucking, you know that. You're screwing it's your mum. Restaurant. It's gone beyond food now. Jesus. We've hit rock bottom. But Lenny's proved to me he's got talent when he's not drinking. And he must care for his mum and the business if he's here every night for nothing. Why does he drink? He really gets stressed. And, and I you... often wonder, uh, am I putting him under too much pressure? You've got to be very careful with that because he's lost his motivation and he has lost his direction. Mm -hmm. So you're the only person that can turn that around, you know that. Every time you give him a drink in the middle of service, you're pushing the distract button. It's you that's going to, you know, close the fucking door. Mm -hmm. You can't allow him another mm -hmm. drink. Yeah. Day three at Oscars, and the writing's on the wall. Like many chefs, Lenin finds it difficult to cope with the stress of a busy service unless he's had a drink. When you're in the middle of service, that's the last thing you need is a fucking drink. And I've seen my chefs try to do it as well in the middle of service by using alcohol to get them through a very busy night. And if you haven't got your fucking wits about you in the middle of service, then you've got no chance. They can be the most disastrous, the most dangerous place to be. First thing with Lenny is to take the pressure away. Starting with his mum's deranged bit of everything menu. I was trying to cover everybody from about 16 up to 80. And I made a pig's ear out of it. Can I just say a menu that big, even I wouldn't attempt to cook. You're putting a noose around his neck because he's not capable of doing it. I think you're more capable of doing four or five starters, four or five mains, four or five desserts. Fuck all else. But for God's sake, you're both Irish. So I want to have a bit of an influence from there, from the trout to the potatoes to your Irish stew and make it sort of become a hallmark. I want to get Lennon excited about a new Irish-themed menu. 
Let's get this fish cake together, shall we? Garlic butter. And show him that food can give him these kicks instead of the booze. Come here a minute, let's try fish. There you go. And hopefully, they can taste the difference there. between his cheap, bought-in cod and pancetta fish cake uh, what are you that? Sauce? Get it on there, big boy. and my fresh homemade alternative. The first one that went in your mouths was what? Oh, one. Homemade. And the second one that went in your mouths was what? That cherry there. You cut into it. What's the first thing the customer sees? Collar. Collar fish. fish. Yeah. Tails of salmon, smoked haddock, a little bit of mustard. That's lovely. That really was nice. And this place becomes renowned for the most amazing homemade fish cakes. Christ almighty. They're, they're a good size. Going deep in. The menu's starting to come together. I just hope I'm not putting too much pressure on Lenny too soon. Are you struggling today without a drink? No, I'm not doing too bad. No, I'm all right. We're we cooking and the fucking shit hits the fan again and we're under pressure. I don't want you going out there. No, no, alone. no. I guarantee you that. The restaurant relaunches in two days' time. But tonight, I'm trying to break Lenny in gently. We've got just 15 people booked, and it's a chance to try out some new specials. Push that, and push the Irish stew, and push all the specials. Who's in charge of the dining room? I am. You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't feel that the other night when I sat in here. I didn't feel like there's one person actually controlling it. I think there's two or three things that are going wrong in the service. You really have to be strong enough to tell them off about it. They'll respect you more. One final thing, under no circumstances does anyone give this man a drink in the middle of service. Is that clear? Mum? I'm the one that objects. Yeah, OK, That's good. True. Put your foot That's down. so true. Put your I'm foot down. Sick put, I'm sick of putting my foot down with him, Molly. Your restaurant? Yeah? Yes. Your son? Yeah. You fucking tell him. Yes, we'll get a kick. Good. <laughs> Here we go. The aim tonight yeah. is to teach Lenny some control yeah. and yeah. discipline. Good. Well, we've got ten minutes before the first customer comes. Do you want to nip off a quick cigarette? Do you mind? You wouldn't be telling me if you did. Hey. Yeah, I do. But come back. This is the challenge, you little fucker. OK. Every time you want to go and leave this kitchen and disappear outside for a cigarette, you put a pound in the box. Every time I swear, I put a pound in the box. Here. And that stays on there. No smoking or drinking for Lenny. No swearing for me. One lamb, medium to well, one chicken and ribs, one portion of chips. Time, 8.15. You sort the pasta out, Les, and leave Richard to tidy up. He can chop them for you. That's it. Now we're working like a kitchen, guys. There you go. I don't know how well Lenny's going to fare in this challenge. What's in the glass? Vodka. Water. Fucking hell. Shit. Too quick. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Are get we started? Big, start getting that full. Are we starting it? Yes, you did. Fuck it. And another one. Oh, God. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Les, you happy? Yeah. Les, be having your... Nice. And you check. You check. We've sent out three tables beautifully. Don't start fucking up now. OK. It's hard to break the habits of a lifetime. Yeah, the lamp will start. Please, Lennon. Les, how long are you, how far are you away now? About two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. And it's eight o'clock, so you must be ready for your next cigarette. I'm not That's going for a cigarette. Thank God for that. I've got two fiver in two minutes. Jesus, that thing. Take Flip two of us to lift it. So far, so good. No drinking, no smoking, and the fresh fish cakes are going down a storm. Nice, they're nice and light. Mm. All clean. No, yeah. come on. Seriously. Yeah, lovely. One smoked salmon pate, two fish cakes, cotton, one cotton pancetta, oh, fuck that. I can't send out the decent fish cakes with one of them cotton pancettas. And that's a big move for you. And I'm not trying to make you look yes, fucking stupid, I know but I think you should go and tell them that. I don't think it's something your mum should go and do. No, no. That's your fucking kitchen. Yeah, OK, OK, come back and sell the fish tape. Where am I going? The actual special fish cakes are homemade today. And they're beautiful. And I'll be honest, the other ones are frozen. Try them, please. Pride and confidence. Yeah. Right. That is the homemade. Oh, they want to die for. <laughs> and you've spoken more here 
in the last two hours than you did do for three days last week. Yeah. And it sounds fantastic. Right. And you sound in control. And you look bloody good. Thank you. Lennon's proved he can get through on a quiet night without his usual distractions. I can smoke hell with well. Smoke some fennel seeds or... Here you go. Just try it. Try it. Try it. This is therapy. Go on, try it. <laughs> there you go. It's not bad, actually. <laughs> oh, God. I'm now smoking asparagus, and it tastes fucking delicious. Oh, no. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's nice to see that standard of food going out, and it's nice to see it going nice and smooth and not coming back. So I'll sleep tonight this time. I'm sure I will. Right, let's get tidied down here. We're making great headway in the kitchen. Now I can work on Mora and making it perfect for the customers. First problem, finding the place. That looks fantastic. Huh? Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You'll never get a better advertising space than that. Fresh home cooking with an Irish flavour upstairs. That's lovely. I'm glad you got the flower boxes done as well. It looks like there's something up there now. Hopefully that should help get some more bums on seats upstairs. Second problem to win back Oscar's Lovely. reputation by creating a midweek bargain. It's a small, close-knit town here in Nantwich. Yeah. So you've got to install confidence back in the locals, and now is the time to turn it around. £14, not too cheap. You can make money on £14 for two courses. And if we can do that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, with 30 customers a night, 90 covers, at 30 quid a head, you know, it's £4,500 in the till. No, I like that. And everything's fresh. Next problem, That's good food it. at a bargain price isn't worth anything without good service. We have to bond, we have to gel. There's not enough teamwork going on in here. Work with your customers and work with your chef. Stack of the tickets coming through, great understanding and uh, make sure we've got great communication. If they get it right, then they'll also help to take pressure off the kitchen. One lamb, medium to well, one chicken and ribs, one portion of chips. Time Lenin gets off to a good start. But he seems a bit more stressed and sounds less confident. You're right, Lenny, you've gone quiet on me. I, no, fine. But evidently, he wasn't. Later that evening, events took a terrible turn. Lennon collapsed. He's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance, and I hope the hell he's okay. It was a fucking shock. I need to know what's going on. It seems Lennon's drinking has aggravated his health problems. And I wish that I got told the truth when we first met. And I felt he's put an amazing brave face on and he's, he's stuck in there. But, you know, when I heard the problem last night with the drink and his medical condition and the problem with his liver, you know, I, I was shocked on the, on the back of trying to but deal with that. I thought Lennon had t told you. I feel like you're not being honest with me. But I am, Gordon. Everything's, everything's hid from me. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know. And it seems even Maura isn't aware of the extent of his problems. Lenny? Hello. Fucking hell. How are you? Not too well. Yeah? Yeah. Am I pleased to see you? How are you feeling? Uh, better than oh. last night, anyway. Fucking hell, boy. You scared me last night. I'm just amazed that you didn't want to sort of share it with me early on because I, 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 I would have rather known. Yeah, it was more embarrassment than anything. Well, nothing to be embarrassed, mate. That. I just wish I knew when we first met that you had that problem. Right, and yes. You've got nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm sorry. Fuck all to be embarrassed about. That's your health funny. and your condition makes far more important than that restaurant, you know that? Yeah. Can't go around like this, I know that. Uh, before he goes anywhere near a kitchen, yeah, he's got to get himself better and clearly start looking after himself. But before any of that takes place, the family have got to start talking to each other so they can fucking help him. Using alcohol as a crutch in the kitchen is a problem that can't be ignored. To better understand Lennon's problems, I've contacted pioneering chef Michael Quinn. Um, thanks so much for coming over. Um, Michael set up the Art Foundation to tackle the industry-wide problem of alcohol and drug abuse, after he himself was toppled by the demon drink. Yeah. Well, you had the perfect job, for fuck's sake. The first ever British chef to be crowned 
the chef de cuisine at the Ritz Hotel. Absolutely. When I left the Ritz, I was at the top of the tree and alcohol just completely took over my life. Yeah. I went from the Ritz eventually to living on the street. I slept on the bridges, in doorways. You know, I was in hospital with liver failure. I had the last rites from a Catholic priest. When, my, when that priest... That close? Yeah. Why do chefs today think it's part of a fucking rock and roll image to drink? Our business as chefs is a very tough... Uh, yeah. It's a tough business. The immensely long hours we do, yeah. the heat, and also that... that, that you know, you're almost part of an SAS squad, yeah, yeah. squad yeah. In, in the kitchen. Yeah. It's that work hard, play hard. We'll show the rest of the bastards how good we are. But one in ten cross that line. And if you cross that line into addiction, into yeah. becoming an alcoholic, you can never go back to social no. drinking. Can this guy continue to cook and deal with a problem at the same time? No. No. He needs to be separated. Willpower doesn't get you well. In order to recover, you need to surrender and admit defeat. And that is the step forward to freedom. Michael's an extreme case, but Lennon needs to take a lesson from this and nip his drinking habit in the bud before it's too late. We're all upset about Lennon, but tonight sees the launch of our new menu and the show must go on. Everything on this fucking menu here is fresh. And the sad thing is, I wish Lenny was here to cook it. But I think what we do for tonight's service is owe this one to him. Yeah? I think that sounds like the first customers. Let's go. With Lennon out of action, it's bingo caller Les to the rescue. And he's nervous as hell. Right, Les, how are you doing? Uh, not so bad, not so bad. Good. You're sweating, yeah? Yes. Good. It's a healthy sign when you sweat. <laughs> So you stand on the hot plate, you call out, and you tell me what you want doing. Gordon Ramsay's going to be your fucking commie. Go easy on him, you're a little bit fragile. OK. Yeah? Run it through your mind first. Yeah. And bingo. Bingo, yeah. Richard, Eyes down please. for a full house. Okay, table six, cover seven. Three pate, two ribs, one broth, one asparagus. Yes, yeah, chef. Gently, nice and gently. Careful when you put in the bowl, please. Yeah, the idea is not to splash it everywhere, yeah? Yeah. Every time that's staying there, Les, you just fuck it up by letting it yeah. get stone cold. He's off to a shaky nice. start, but this is his Go. first time running a stop, kitchen. Stop, 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 stop. Come on, Les. Fuck it, what do you want them to floss with a fucking Klim film? Come on. Go, please. Give me a little toss. I'm sure you're good at tossing, come on. Watch those eyebrows. Gordon shouts too, Mum shouting. <laughs> Go, one no dumplings. Go. Maura's still not leading her team in the dining room. Shit food doesn't get tipped. Good food always gets tips. They need to be inspired. Work the table. Charm them. Come on, Les. Happy? Yep. Good. There you go. Cross them off, please. Table nine. In the kitchen, things are looking up. Three fish cakes, two cabbage, one peas, three mash. Yes, chef. This is fantastic. Yeah. It's absolutely fucking amazing. Well done. But the one thing letting Les down is Maura's lack of discipline front of house. The last order, yeah, one of the girls forgot to take the main course out. And that's what I said earlier about how the diamonds really got to fucking wake up a little bit. Not funny, sweetheart. No, you're not. What I'm trying to say, yeah. we have got to get it together. End of story. Yeah? Quickly. Service. The numbers Good are man. really coming in for Les tonight. Right. Yeah. Everybody OK outside? Everybody's enjoying the food. Great. Kids are coming back clean. That's you're doing right. a good job, Les. Thank you very much. I'm not a great meat eater, but this is brilliant. It's lovely. I went for the ribeye steak which was cooked superb. Food tonight was gorgeous. Really, really nice. Yeah. He's done a fucking good job. Everyone was expecting him to sink from the crack and to disappear and fuck off back to college, but uh, he's done himself proud. I think more importantly, he's done Lenny proud. The fact that everything's gone out brilliantly and smoothly, you know, and the fact that I've spent all day preparing it and from fresh, that's why, why I became a chef, really. Good feedback. Customers? The last tip we got was the £18.50. <gasps> £18.50? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. You know, some mistakes tonight that they're really a problem, but they're so easily sorted. Yeah. So. That's just communication, you know that? Yeah. You're not good at disciplining staff. Is that what you think? Uh, you show, you've proved to me. Mm. I've never heard you shout, never heard you tell anyone off, because when this business closes, they will go off and look for a new job. And if you're going to maximise on your dream, sweetheart, and keep this place open, you so, so, so have to get on top. Your business and your money. Before I go, 
I just want you all, for 30 seconds, to close your eyes. And Les is just going to read off some numbers. Give it to me, big boy. Eyes down, look in. Les is den, number 10. <laughs> Two fat ladies, 88. All the legs, 11. <laughs> anyway, round, 69. All credit to him. So Les has pulled it off there. tonight. Fantastic. Out. But he's only a novice. Good night. And Lennon needs rest and time to recover before he even considers stepping foot in a kitchen again. Dear, oh dear. If Moore is going to stand any chance of getting Oscars back on track, she needs to find a new chef. And fast. It's been a month since I spent a week at Oscars, and it was one hell of a week. What the hell was this for? The food was so bad, the customers came once, but never returned. Somebody's having a laugh at you. The head chef lacked respect for the place. I'd say get fucked. His mum, the owner, was at her wit's end. I just I can't carry on like this much longer. Lennon smoked and drank on the job. I've been here all day and I just wanted one drink. But we worked through it. We've sent out three tables beautifully. Don't start fucking up now. And the new Irish menu was looking great. The food tonight was gorgeous. Really, really nice. But Lennon wasn't. He collapsed. He's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance. I hope the hell he's OK. After a break, Hi guys. Lennon's back in the kitchen. And I'm here to find out well, how he's response. doing. Thank you. Uh, we got some colour on your face. You look brown. Oh, you I look... feel a lot better now. Yeah? Drink-wise, are you seeing someone? That's, yeah, I am, actually. I've been yeah. to my doctor and I've been everything sorted out. A couple of bad days here and there, but uh -huh. um, the majority good. Most well, important thing, then, you do something about it. You know that. Because that's I not fair know. on you and that's not fair on Mum and it's not fair mm. on the restaurant. When are you having a drink? After service? Before service? What are you doing? Before? Um, Any time. Now? 99.9 .9 after service. Possibly sometimes don't even bother, I just go home and get in my bed. And I'll sit right now, bit to menus and just mess about at home, really. Are you eating properly? Oh, God, yeah, I'm eating. Like, I can't stop eating at the minute. Well, you're not exactly fucking fat, are you? Well, dear, was. dear, Len, turn around, let me show a proper tummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what you call a fucking triplet, big boy. Uh, he's fucking eating properly. Hello, Gordon. How are you, darling? I'm all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank How you are you? Much. Not too bad. Yes? Yes. Um, how's business? Um, well, my quiet tuition nights are coming on now. Uh-huh. Midweek. It's um, getting better. More importantly, Lennon, is he up to the job of actually running um, it full-time? I am iffy about it. I am iffy. Not certain? No. 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 Oh, it's all right. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's... Drinking and uh, kitchens and stoves don't go together, do they? No, uh, lethal combination. Maura's keen to take the burden away from Lennon. She's lined up a potential new head chef. But Lennon's not happy about it. I mean, I've worked in my own restaurant um, since I was a child. I wanted to be my dad. Uh -huh. um, and now that it's here, I do have that fear that it's going to be taken away from me. Mm -hmm. No yeah, one's getting you know, rid of it. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, we're trying to think of a way forward so we can... Um, keep benefit, keep this place alive and, 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 and keep your mum's dream and her ambition. You cannot continue like this. You know that? It's going to kill you. And a new chef, I think, is a breath of fresh air. Uh, you know, so can we kiss and make up and let's meet this fucking chef? Huh? Thank you. I love him to bits. Mark Warrington is a fully trained chef with an impressive CV. Ovens on. But can he cook? Come up with anything you wish. One dish is fine. Yeah? Okay. Set up, okay. Come through. Uh, well, it looks a little bit more fucking Chinese than it does to Irish to well, me. The fish is, but the rest of it. But the potatoes are Irish. Yeah. Uh, the fish is cooked nicely. I do like it. Fish is lovely. Yeah. It's quite interesting seeing you guys bond in there. Hmm? Um, good work, Mark. No problem at all. Yeah. I thought that was tough. Lennon, Lennon and me basically, we can bounce ideas off one another. Mm. What I've seen in the kitchen. Looks like we found our man. Uh, Mark hell. starts his new oh. job at Oscars uh. next week. But tonight is Lennon's chance to shine. I can't fucking do anything in there if you still come and talk to me. Everything that you know is fresh. It's got to go out. Bit of a surprise for you tonight. I haven't told any of you. Oh, bollocks, what's yeah. happening now? I've got ten very important customers coming. It's the ten customers that were absolutely fuming the first night I had dinner here. 
big fucking night. Now, on top of that, they're going to be presented with this. It's an Oscars restaurant loyalty card. And it's to inspire them to return to the restaurant. And on their sixth visit, they'll come as our guests. Look out for them. Yeah? This evening, Moore is hosting an Irish night. If it's going to run smoothly, the waitresses must be keen as well as green. And um, are you in control? Yes. Yeah? Because remember last time, I wasn't that impressed with the service, you know that? And tonight I'm going to be all over the service, you know that? Like a rash. Yeah? Whose kitchen is this? Mike. Do you want me to stand back? Yes. If you yeah. don't mind. And uh, not interfere? Yeah. So I'll stand back. All right, let's dance. Yeah? Well, I don't know about fucking dancing. Right. I can moonwalk, but I can't fucking dance. I've seen nothing. Uh, no, I've got to be honest, you look like a rash truck. Yeah? I'll tap to that. The menu of Irish stew and pork and Guinness is exactly right for Oscar's new Irish theme. First order, patty soup with garlic mushrooms, um, two fish cake, two stew, with veg, three potatoes. Off to a good start? Yep. Yep. And the restaurant's full, so the waitresses have got to give it their best. Just slow the girls down a little bit, get them walking a little bit gracefully, like ladies, yeah? Not like baby elephants. Lennon's food seems to be hitting the spot. hundred times better. By a mile. I've got my loyalty card and, I'll, and I, will come, I will come back from my paella with crab sticks to what I've had tonight. Big miles of pie, it really is. The plates are consistently coming back empty. But I thought bingo caller Les might have shown a bit more pizzazz. Les, you're a big softie, you know that. Push him out of the way. Take some pressure off him and be strong. Big softies don't make good cooks. I don't want to fucking hear that you've turned into a fucking dinner lady. Yeah? Or you're working for fucking Jamie Oliver. Yes? It's been a good night for Lennon, but I'm pleased he's got a chef to help him through. Maybe more as Irish dream will come true after all. One last thing. 15 stone chefs with size 14 feet don't dance. I'm telling you, I can't dance. I can't dance. I can't dance. I'm not going to fucking dance. I can't dance. Oh, no, 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 babe. I'm babe, I can't dance. I can't dance. I just said no. I can't dance. I can't dance. I'm coming up. Just a quick. No, honestly, I can't dance. Just a quick. I promise you now, honestly, I can't dance. I can't dance. Give me a kiss. I think I'll leave him to it. <laughs> <laughs>